Hey Capricorn, welcome to your reading for today. This is going to be a general energy check-in for you. We're going to see what do you need to know at this time, or what's happening in your energy this week. Um, is there anything that you need to know? Now, this can be past, present, or future. Okay, you can be a cross watcher. Take it how it resonates here for you. Um, and if you're interested in a personal reading, those are open at in the time being now. And that information is down below in the description box, okay? So let's see here, holy angels and the spirit guides, holy angels and the holy spirit watching over Capricorn. What does Capricorn need to know at this time? What's happening with Capricorn? <clears throat> the sun at the bottom of the deck and the sun is coming out here as well. Nice. Okay, so we have the Knight of Swords here first. Um, you could be taking action. You could be take, taking some sort of action, doing something here. Nine of Cups. This has to do with pers uh, personal fulfillment, wish fulfillment. So you could be doing something here, communicating something, following your dreams, okay, with the temperance being here it's like and the sun whatever you're doing here it feels right like it feels like your path you could be feeling guided to take some sort of action here okay and this um looks like it's gonna make you happy Or you could even be receiving communication and it's making you feel happy. It's making you feel like you're on the right path or <clears throat> like this is something with purpose. Like this is what you're meant to do. Something definitely feels very fulfilling. Like it's the right path. Like it has something to do with fulfillment. So why is the Knight of Swords here for Capricorn? The Hermit, the Six of Wands, and the Two of Wands. Yeah, something that you're doing or a direction that you're going towards, um, this is going to bring you in a lot of success. It could be bringing you in public recognition. Um, it could be bringing you in... This could be from outside, like it could be other people that are looking up to you and seeing you as a role model and um, seeing you as an inspiration. But I feel like it has something to do with your personal fulfillment as well. Like something about the direction that you're going, it's something that's calling to you from within, like you feel that it's right. You feel like you're on your path. I feel like you're being guided into a certain direction to go a certain direction and you know that this is gonna make you happy like it feels right something here feels like purpose it's like it's also kind of giving me that feeling of like even if other people were to try to deter you from this path or talk you out of it you know that this is your path like if something about this feels on the inside very um it feels right to you. Like it feels like it's where you're supposed to be or where you're supposed to be going. Like you can feel this. And that's how, uh, that's what you're making your decisions based off of. It's like you've decided I'm going this direction. I'm going to do this. This is what is going to make me happy. So what's the nine of cups? We have the Seven of Cups, the World, and the Ace of Cups. Yeah, it's really giving me like you figured it out. I don't know. Because with the Seven, you're confused. Like you don't know. Like everything's kind of up in the air. It's like you might have known that this, whatever this is for you, it was an option going in this direction, but it felt maybe very overwhelming or you weren't quite sure. But then a cycle closed out like something ended here, you close a chapter and then you received a new cup. And it's like, this was like the missing cup because then you go from seven to the ace to the nine. So 
something that maybe in the past felt overwhelming or felt very confusing or you had a lot of different options, okay? It might even just be about options, like you had just a lot of different options to go down, paths to choose, but some sort of a cycle has closed out and you got a new, um, a new idea or a new blessing here and now you know that this is your path, like this is gonna make you happy. What's temperance? The Nine of Wands. The Chariot in Reverse, the Knight of Wands, and the Nine of Wands. Yeah, with the Chariot in Reverse, see, I'm not sure if this is your energy, okay? If this is you feeling defeated or like no motivation, okay? Like you can't move forward on something here. But then you have this like drive, okay? Someone here has like so much drive. Knight of Wands, Nine of Wands. It's like, this is the drive to keep pushing forward. Like you're just gonna, you're not gonna give up. You're gonna keep going. You've got that fire that was lit within you. And now you're like, I'm ready to go. I'm not gonna stop. You can't get me to give up. I'm the wounded warrior, right? I've got um, a lot of energy on reserve here. So maybe this is something that you came out of Chariot in Reverse. A feeling of um, feeling defeated or demotivated in some sort of way like something here sparked your passion and that's kind of what I'm getting with the seven of cups too like something here made you feel maybe overwhelmed um, disorientated you just didn't know what to do a lot of different options and then something here sparked you and it's like it's almost like that feeling of like okay you know what now I know now I know. I was confused for a while. I wasn't sure if this is my path, but now I know this is my path. This is what I'm going to do. It's like a fire is lit, okay? Some sort of inspiration here to take some sort of action. So what is the Knight of Swords? The Page of Swords. It could have something to do with some sort of communication or Five of Cups. Something that made you sad. So some sort of communication came in that made you sad. Nine of Cups. Huh? What is a, what's the sadness here, Five of Cups? Or what's the Page of Swords? What's this communication information about? Paradise, about someone being happy, someone expanding, happiness, expansion, playfulness, one is enjoying each other. So some sort of, in or I don't know if it's information or communication that came in or if it's this like, um, it's some sort of determination that that's what you want. You you want to be happy. Like you want to go from some sort of sadness to happiness. So is wait a minute. Is this about communication or is this about or what is it? Help me understand the Knight of Swords, please. Two of Wands, it's about a choice moving forward, which is the same card right here, Two of Wands. It's about making a choice. So it's kind of like giving me like taking your life into your own hands a little bit, like you deciding how you're gonna move forward. What's the Five of Cups? The Grim Reaper. The relationship is over, no second chances. Grow and transform your life. And that's kind of what I feel. So something here ended completely. But you've decided that you are going to grow and transform your life through this and go towards what you feel like is fulfillment to you. Okay. It's like, it's kind of giving me like seeing the blessing, um, the blessing in disguise. Like sometimes when something ends, we, um, we don't see that it could be 
a blessing that's actually leading us to a higher purpose, right? It's like when a relationship ends that we were not supposed to be in any ways, and then it ends up um, changing us or our outlook or our priorities. So there's something here about someone wanting to go towards happiness. Maybe even communicating this. And not just happiness, I feel like fulfillment. I feel like it has something to do with purpose, okay? Um, so you could have been grieving a relationship being over. What's the Nine of Cups? But someone around you was wearing a mask and this was an epiphany that you had. So there was some sort of shocking news, an epiphany that someone around you was wearing a mask. Someone was not showing their true feelings. Someone was hiding who they are. They were pretending something around you. And you decided to make the healthiest choice for yourself, which is separating. Which is honestly really good. And that's what I feel too. Like someone here made a very healthy choice in the situation. You went through something where you were grieving you you or you could still be going through that i don't know how recent this is okay but you went through something where you were really sad it shocked you to find out you had some sort of an epiphany a sudden epiphany upheaval in your life that someone around you was wearing a mask you didn't you couldn't see who this person truly was they were hiding their face they were pretending to be someone that they're not Okay, so what's the hermit? But it's almost like that realization, like that heartbreak or that sadness is what is like igniting this fire in you to almost like free yourself from um, these kind of people. And, and prioritize yourself and your own purpose and your own happiness. Huh? So what's the hermit? The two of cups. So this has something to do with a relationship. And a fight. A fight. So you've been fighting with someone here that you were in a relationship with. Now what's the hermit though? the golden mirror and you've been listening to your intuition and going within about this that you are dealing with a narcissist okay and that's the mask that's kind of that realization that who you are dealing with is a narcissist okay and this is a one-sided relationship yeah it feels like very per like very powerful personal growth capricorn okay Wherever you are, this feels like very powerful personal growth because you you had you had some sort of a realization about what you're giving your energy to or what you're giving your time to. It has something to do with the fighting, okay? Um, why it's always a fight with this person, why there's almost always these arguments or discussions, but you then realizing that, you know, you have to go towards your purpose. And this might be someone that is holding you back because they're narcissistic. Like this person only cares about themselves, right? They are only, they only focus on themselves. And it's, you might be realizing that you've been giving, giving, giving to someone that only thinks about themselves, never thinking about you. And that's painful. That's a painful realization when um, you're so selfless and the other person is so selfish, right? It's like you're never going to get that same back. You're never going to get them to be as selfless as you. And that's what, um, yeah, that's what this kind of feels like. You might be um, reclaiming your power here. So, okay, what's the six of wands? Or realizing that you need to, right? Something like that. What's the six of wands? The temperance. Yeah, I don't know why. I feel like you had 
whatever this relationship is that you were attached to, this has started some sort of like a spiritual awakening in you. Like this could be in the past. This could be in the recent past. I don't know when this happened for you, okay? But it feels like even if you already had have had your spiritual awakening, okay? It feels like this deepened something for you. Like it it, it has something to do with purpose. Like feeling like um realizing your purpose like realizing what how big your purpose actually is and that you might be with someone that doesn't even um, appreciate you or recognize you or um, value you what kind of a person you are and all of this fighting that's going on within this relationship could be making you feel like you're distracted from your purpose like it's kind of giving me that breaking point where you're asking yourself like okay i've got i've got all these dreams i've got this purpose i feel like i have a mission on this earth and i'm sitting here fighting with a narcissist who only cares about themselves it's kind of like um you know i need to do my own thing i need to go my own path i need to you know fulfill my mission and if you have a narcissist that person is gonna want to make you feel like your only existence on this earth is to serve them right they don't want you thinking about yourself or um, growing into who you're meant to be. They just want a little dog on a leash, right? So you might be freeing yourself from this right now, okay? And it feels really powerful, if I'm being honest. The Page of Wands. Yeah, you want to be free. You're like, I'm ready for an adventure. I want to feel free. I want to have an adventure. I want to go out in the world. Maybe this is um, also something about feeling restricted by the person that you're with, um, feeling like this person doesn't support your dreams, okay? So I feel like you are listening, you're going within and you're realizing, like this could even be you, maybe you are currently in a narcissistic relationship and you're going within and realizing, I'm dealing with a narcissist. And then it's that realization like, so what are you gonna do now? That's the two of wands, what are you gonna do now? You can go this way, or you can go this way. You have to make a choice though. You have to make a choice. What's the choice gonna be? And I feel like right now you're at that choice of like, am I gonna choose to give to this person that's a narcissist or am I gonna choose myself? And I feel like you're choosing you. Because it also kind of feels like you didn't realize, like this is kind of giving me um, my Virgo reading from yesterday again, like someone, well, yesterday for you. <laughs> um, someone not realizing that they were dealing with a narcissist. It's kind of like when you have all these issues with a person and then you go on like Google search and you type in what are the signs of a narcissist and you're like reading through the, um, the symptoms, I guess you could say, the character traits and you're like, oh my God, they do all of those things. Oh my God, I think they're a narcissist, right? So something like that. <laughs> okay, what's the two of wands? A king of wands. So there's a king of wands here who has to make a choice. Or a king of wands is making a choice. Eight of pentacles in reverse because something here is not working. Or someone doesn't want to work on something anymore. Something's not working. What's the eight of pentacles reverse? And it's even, especially when, date, meeting someone new, plan setting a date. Um, what I was gonna say about narcissists, I don't know why that's so, that's important for someone here, but there's so many different kinds of narcissists, right? They're very, very hard to get your head around, especially the covert type, because it's so subtle that it's very hard to pick up, right? You have to be, like uh, you, either you've had to have met a lot of them in your life, okay, over and over and over again, or you have to really like read into the subject because you have the, the, um, the I don't know what they're all called, the out in the open, oh yes, you can definitely tell I'm a narcissist, and then you have the very subtle covert type. Um, and then there's like so many nuances between that, right? Then you have those that have um, also like, 
sociopathic tendencies, okay? And then you have those that are, um, that act like the victim, like they love playing the victim card and I'm this poor thing, right? Like it, sometimes it's very hard to pick up if someone is a narcissist or not, yeah? But something is not working out here. What's not working? A new phase in an engagement in a partnership. Watching, looking, stalking. So, I don't know. You might have wanted a new phase with someone, okay? A new phase in the commitment in this partnership. And it's just not working out. It's not working out. And the sunglasses, I feel like, is the rose-colored glasses, honestly. I feel like someone has rose-colored glasses on in their relationship, thinking that something's gonna work when it's not. It's like, you can, it's like beating a dead horse. Like, that's what dating a narcissist is, is like, because you think that you're gonna change them, and you think they're gonna change, and you hope one day they're gonna change. They're never gonna fucking change. Okay, and some people really, I feel like they need that like, that shake of like, wake up, wake up, they're never gonna change because they refuse. Like some people just refuse to accept that truth. That you cannot change a person. And narcissists, it does not matter how many times you try to explain to this person what they're doing wrong. It doesn't even matter how many times the narcissist tells you, I will change. They are incapable of changing because in reality, they don't see anything wrong with the way that they are. They're only saying that it's like, it's, they're, it's, un, they're on, it's, they're, it's something with brain development. Like it honestly comes down to the way that their brain is wired through development. Like people that have a certain wired brain, you cannot change it. That's like saying to a person with ADHD, um, we're going to change your ADHD. Oh, okay, so now there's a cure for that. You're never gonna cure it because it's the way that the brain is wired. A narcissist is not just a slang word, a, criti a criticism to throw at someone when you, when you don't like them that day. It's an actual diagnosis. It's like, you have to see it as something like, a, like not, it's not like that, but it's, if you say someone has autism or they have ADHD and some, if someone is a narcissist, it's the brain the brain wiring, right? You're never gonna change it. That's just how they are. It's their personality type. So you are going to be, it's like, you can't go up to an autistic person and say, I'm gonna wait around for one day that you change. You're gonna be waiting your whole fucking life. It's never gonna happen, right? Like the, that person can say like, oh yeah, you're right. You know, they can work on certain things, but the wiring is there. And that wiring is a lack of empathy, okay? Um, a lack of guilt, remorse, a lack of compassion. Like you cannot plant that into someone's being if it's not there, right? So somebody here, I feel like, is finally coming to that realization. And that takes some people a very long time because we make the mistake of thinking that other people are like us, like especially if you're an empath, okay, and you have an ext you're extremely sensitive, and you're extremely empathetic, and very like, you know, you feel deeply, and you feel a lot of, especially things like guilt, shame, embarrassment, like you feel those things very deeply as an empath, okay, and then when you have a narcissist, even more because they exasperate that in you, right? They they make you feel guilty, and they make you feel shame, and you know all that all that shit. So. We do not understand as empaths, like, but we feel this, we feel bad. So why don't you feel bad? We feel bad. We feel guilty. Why don't you feel that? There's nothing you can say to a narcissist that will make them feel guilty for what they did because they're lacking that you have to see it like a wire, right? Like, like cable wires, like an electrical wiring of a house. Everybody has different wiring and we some people have that wiring to feel those emotions and some people don't And it doesn't matter how many times you try and explain the feeling to them. That wiring is not there. They're not gonna get it Do you get what I'm saying? So You can't you cannot rebuild the house The house is already built the development has already been completed the brain is already you know It's gone through year 35. Okay, depending on how old you are. It's 
okay they've already had all their traumatic childhood like it's not go it's not gonna do anything like you have to either accept it the way you the way it is or you have to do what's best for you okay and you can't be as an empath you cannot be so selfless so selfless that you say i'm gonna settle and and deal with a narcissist for the rest of my life because that poor person can't change so you know i need to accept them and love them for who they are as a narcissist i'm just gonna deal with it no that's not the point either okay because i feel like most empaths they go through relationships with narcissists to learn more about our own boundaries. Like what are you willing to accept from another person? How much are you willing to accept for, for treatment? Like if this person treats you like this and this, are you going to stick up for yourself? Are you gonna be a doormat to this person? Empaths need to learn boundaries and they really need to learn standing up for themselves and protecting their emotions, right? So, Someone here is taking off the rose colored glasses. I can feel that, okay? Now you could be dealing with a Virgo. You could have Virgo in your chart because it's giving me Virgo reading again a little bit, okay? Um, yeah, but you, you know, your purpose, whoever you are who either is going through this or went through this, um, no matter how long ago, you are right in this, in, in this feeling of, I feel like I have a greater purpose on this life. And if you say that to a narcissist, they will laugh in your face. You wanna know why? Because they believe like they are the purpose. They believe they are the greatest shit on the block. You cannot go to a narcissist and say, I feel like I have a purpose that has nothing to do with you. They are gonna make you feel like you are so insignificant and small and not worthy of anything. Oh, you think you have a purpose? Really, really, <laughs> you? You think you are gonna change the world? You, you are not, you don't have what it takes. That's gonna be the narcissist. But you do, whoever you are, you do, and you're right, and that's why you feel that way. Because whatever relationship this was for you, you were supposed to learn something from it, and it has something to do with your own character development and also believing in yourself. Right? I think anybody that has had, is a victim of narcissistic abuse, the only regret they have after leaving someone like this is that they didn't leave sooner. Really. That they didn't leave sooner. That is the regret after leaving a narcissist. It's not, oh, I regret because that poor person, what happened to them? No, it's I wish I left sooner because this, this, these are kind of people that will break you and break your psyche. And that's not what a relationship is about. It's not supposed to be about, I am a servant to my master. Like, fuck out of here, okay? So what's the Nine of Cups? Three of Wands in reverse. Three of Swords. A lot of three threes coming out, okay, in my readings here today. So. That could be significant. I don't know if someone is 33. I don't know if someone is born on the third. Maybe someone's born in March. I don't know. Or 3-3. Three, three. Maybe you're seeing that number a lot. If you are, that means... Well, I always see 3-3 three, three as like a big hug, okay? When I see 3-3, three, three, it's like my confirmation for everything's fine. We're here. You're not alone. We're giving you a hug, okay? Consciousness is all around you. That's what it feels like. But there's pain here. So you're going through some sort of heartbreak right now. What's the heartbreak? Hold on. Seduction in reverse. Attraction, flirting, dating, hooking up in reverse. Temptation in reverse. Hmm. Why is that in reverse? Because this is a karmic relationship. Yeah, it is. It's a very karmic relationship. Full of fleeting triggers. Turmoil, resentment, and lessons. Yeah, a lot of lessons. That's what it feels like. And this could be, this could have been um, 
See, what's really typical for narcissists, see, they don't really like talking about, you know, the problem at hand, right? Especially they don't, because they don't want to hear that they did anything wrong. They don't acknowledge it. So their favorite thing to do in a fight is kiss and make up. Let's just kiss and make up. Okay, we'll fight and then we'll just kiss and make up. If you get what I'm saying, like they just want, they just think that affection is going to fix it, right? Like, you know, it'll make you forget everything. And that's tricky because, you know, that plays a lot on like biology again. Basically, the narcissists are like bio, uh, biology hackers, okay? Because they know that as soon as they get, you know, all flirty and hooky uppy and seducing, your natural body response is hormones. There's nothing you can do about it, right? Okay? So that's how they get you like, uh, hooked on this weird toxic cycle of like fighting to make up fighting to make up fight because they will then just do things that will get some sort of an outpour of a um a hormone like a happiness hormone from you and then you'll just forget right a lot what a lot of them do is like buying things because that makes you happy like it if you if a narcissist buys you something right after they've done something to you okay or you know this is this is very typical for even abusers like this can even go into things like physical violence physical abuse okay and i am speaking from experience here they will get very physically violent like uh you know whatever abusive and then um they'll buy you flowers or they'll buy you something they'll buy you you know just something to make that that they think you know, they want to surprise you with it. So you get home and there's like this little surprise and they're, they'll, they'll be like, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. And you think that it's real. Like you think that they're really sorry, right? Because look, they bought you something. It makes you happy, hormones. And then it's like, oh, you're so sweet, so kind. So there's something here about whoever you are realizing the cycle that you've been in it's a cycle you've been in a really abusive cycle and sometimes abuse is subtle sometimes abuse is covert you don't have to be in a relationship where someone is beating you okay you don't have to be in a relationship where someone is insulting you beating you um to for it to be abuse because I feel like, honestly, whoever you are, you've been dealing with a person that is very covert abusive, like very subtly abusive, so subtle that you didn't realize it was abuse for a very long time because the comments were just so um, little. But you probably felt it more in the way that this person treated you or how you felt, which is, I feel like I'm being selfless all the time and I feel like you're being selfish all the time and everything's always about you and what I can't do good enough. Or, you know, feeling like you're not appreciated or not, you're like someone's not, like they just don't give you the same that you give them, right? And that's, that's, a, that's tricky. So something here feels tricky, but it does feel like you kind of have seen it now for what it really is, okay? And this definitely has something to do with rose-colored glasses definitely definitely and it takes a lot of time it, ta it does take a lot of experience like i don't know who this reading is for but it truly takes a lot of experience with different kinds of narcissists until you really get the hang of what they're like like that's hard to explain, but you know, if you've met maybe like three, four or five of them in your life, you kind of can pick up on them sooner than if um, you've only been dating, if you've dated someone and you're in a long-term relationship or a marriage and this person is a narcissist and you just, for you, it feels normal. You thought everybody's like this. It's like, no, no, not really. So what's the seven of cups? Yeah, you didn't, something was blocked here. And in denial, eyes closed, denial, deflection. I, you couldn't see, somebody here could not see. It's like going blind, walking blind in the dark. That's, that's what this felt like for you, I guess. 
Yeah, but now you're finding things out. Be lighthearted, finding out things coming to light. So you, you, I don't know what it was, but something powerful happened within you here. Somebody had a powerful awakening and it starts with someone that they're connected to here. Okay, that you're connected to. So what's the world? Sorry, I'm just listening. I don't want to live here anymore. <laughs> okay, giving and receiving affection in reverse, exactly. You have realized that the uh, relationship that you're in is not love. It's not unconditional love. Like your love for someone is most likely unconditional. If you are being treated this way, if you are um, dealing with this kind of a relationship, this kind of a person, and you still love them and you wanna care for them and you want what's best for them, that's unconditional love. You are being abused and you still love them, that is love, that's unconditional love. But you're also realizing that the person that you're with does not love you unconditionally. Their love is conditional. I will love you and I will be nice to you, but you have to do what I say. You have to act the way that I want you to act. You have to be the way that I want you to be. And if you don't do it that way, this way, act this way, say this, these things, do this for me, then I don't love you. And I'm going to treat you like utter shit until you do as I say again. That's conditional love. Because this person is feeding you love as if you were, um, as if it were a treat, as if you're a doggy that's being like trained, right? It's like, here, doggy, okay, do this trick for me, and then um, if you do it right for me, I'm gonna give you love, right? Um, and these kind of people, then if you uh, if you say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, or just not put all your focus and attention on them 24/7, and want to have your own life. Oh no, get ready for the wrath, okay? Get ready. So you've, you've realized this here. Now what's the Ace of Cups? I feel like the Ace of Cups is gonna be self-love, honestly. Photograph, photographs. Looking at your photos, missing you, nostalgia, make new memories, photographs. What's this here? The Two of Pentacles. Mm, okay. This could even be about Queen of Swords. This could even be about a double life. Someone lying, someone cheating, maybe even with the Two of Pentacles, someone juggling. What's the Two of Pentacles? The mirror in reverse. So somebody, some somebody can't be mirrored anymore. Mirroring each other in reverse. Introspection in reverse. Something can't be mirrored anymore. Or a mirror broke. A mirror has broken. Love call in reverse. Yes, yeah, something is not love. Looking at your photos, but something is not love. Someone expresses love, a message of love, thinking of you, letting you know. Whatever this is, it, it wasn't love. Somebody was not expressing love to someone. Somebody was not texting someone on the phone, telling them that they love them. Something was not love. Okay, so, okay, what else do we need to know about that? Knight of Cups, this has to do with a, a love offer or somebody being loving to someone, being loving towards someone here, the star. Being loving towards the star, the seven of wands, and then being rejected. The Nine of Pentacles and the Sun.
So somebody has found out that something was all about abundance for someone. It was only about money. It's only about what somebody can give to someone. That's what it feels like. It's like somebody might have realized that um, all something was was for stability or for money. Like it wasn't real. Like somebody's emotions weren't real or something like that. The three of pentacles. Like it's just about money or what is this? Or it's just about lifestyle. The five of swords. Someone here was a liar. They were deceptive. They are, they're selfish. They only care about what they want. They only care about themselves. They only care about what they can take from you. They don't care about you. They don't, they don't, they don't love you. This Okay, so I don't know where that video just cut off because my phone died out of nowhere. Um, so, weird thing though, this video that saved was 40 minutes and 33 seconds long, which is weird because I just said 3-3, okay? So, 3-3 could be significant for someone here. Also, um, since my phone just died like that out of nowhere, I, I didn't even know it, I had low battery. Whatever this was, it's kind of blindsided, it's, uh, blindsided someone, okay? Like, you were not expecting this. You were not expecting something here. So what's temperance? The high priest is in reverse. Yeah, you were not listening to your intuition about something. Tower. So someone here might have been ignoring the red flags, okay? You might have been ignoring the signs for a long time. You didn't listen to your intuition about something. And that's when spirit stepped in and showed you okay um it's like your spirit guides and your ancestors they forced you to see something that you just refused to see because you weren't listening to your intuition your intuition could have been telling you for a long time that something was wrong but you just didn't want to see it you didn't want to believe it and something shocking came in for you to realize this yeah so what's uh temperance acts breakup separation yeah this needed to this needed to stop you needed to stop the pattern it's like stopping this toxic cycle with someone over and over again you needed to stop the pattern and you were not listening someone was not listening to their intuition to stop the pattern with this person okay and it's like even though it was painful something came in that forced you to see it and sometimes it is really painful but it's like would you have seen it any other way because i feel like maybe you know in these cases there's a lot of subtle signs and a subtle red flags leading up to something but if we ignore the red flags and we ignore the signs at some point our ancestors and our guides are going to rip it open and force us to look at something and some and most of the times then it's like really painful but that's what like shakes us awake it's what shakes you it's like your ancestors are like wake up you don't wake up they're like okay get the ice water Poof. and then you're awake right and then you are awake and then you cannot unsee something you cannot go back so what's cherry reverse the queen of wands yeah, this, this ride with this Queen of Wands is over, okay? Six of Swords. It's like your guides were like, get out of there. We're bringing you to safety. You don't want to see something, we're going to rip it wide open, okay? You didn't want to see something about someone here. So it was ripped wide open. It was like this, your, your, your ancestors, your guides, they stopped this car from moving forward. They stopped the car because you wouldn't have stopped it on your own, okay? And that's how it is sometimes. The hammer, sabotage, rebuilding. Yeah, they took a ham, either they took a hammer to this car, to this movement, and they said, stop. Like they, like your, your guides, your ancestors, they put like the nails on the street. They're like, this car is stopping right now. It's not moving forward because someone here is not listening to their intuition and we need to wake you up. And it's, a, it's honestly about like saving you. Like this is a saving grace. It's a blessing in disguise. Because you might have tried to rebuild something repetitively, worked on something, given 
you know, selflessly given chances after chances. And it's like, no, at some point you need to see that someone here is a snake. Someone here is a snake. They're malicious. They're hiding in the grass. You're not seeing this person for who they really are, right? So what's the Knight of Wands? Four of Cups. Rejection. The Ten of Swords. Yeah, betrayal. Yeah, this is ultimate betrayal. This is ultimate betrayal. So it could have something to do with a fire sign. We do have the Knight of Wands here, Queen of Wands, King of Wands. So it could have something to do with a fire sign, okay? That you feel very, very betrayed by. What's this Nine of Wands? The star in reverse. Yeah, you cannot heal this. You can't heal this. <clears throat> the Knight of Cups. You're being protected from this person. Honestly, with temperance here, the nine of wands and this breakup separation here, it's honestly like your guides and your angels have come in to stop this pattern for you and protect you from this person because you were not listening to your intuition. They came in and they axed that shit. They had to, and it was for your own protection and your own good. You had to separate from this person. You had to get away from them and stop some sort of a, a toxic cycle here because you you weren't you weren't gonna do it. And that's when the tower comes in, that's when the tower hits. That's when that shocking revelation comes, is when we don't see something because sometimes we don't wanna see it. We just don't wanna see it. We don't want to. Maybe because we also know that if we opened ourselves up to that possibility, it would be too painful. So we just pretend like it's not there. Because the thought of that would be extremely painful. So it's like we almost try to protect ourselves by denying reality. And your guides say, no, 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 no. Protecting yourself is facing reality, okay? And not running away from it. And you were giving to this person. You were giving to them. You were giving too much to them. Okay, so let's see here in Capricorn. What's the closing words for Capricorn? Ten of Wands. Yeah, you were carrying this burden here. This felt like a big burden. Like, when once you separate yourself from this person, believe me, you are going to feel free. You are going to notice when that burden is no longer there. Page of Pentacles. This has to do with some sort of an investment or... Some sort of a, a payment. Three of Wands in reverse again. You didn't see this coming. The Hanged Man in reverse and the Hermit. You did not see this coming for some reason, okay? Someone here is stuck. But you're looking at this now, the Hermit. You are going within about this. Or you might be going within and thinking about how, how did I get myself into this situation? Like, how did I get stuck in this situation? How did I get in, how did I get into this? How did I get stuck in this? How did this happen to me? How did it get so far? Like, that's sometimes what it can feel like too. It's like, how did it get this far? How could I let it get this far? I didn't see this coming. It's because, honestly, it's because we sometimes, like I said, we don't want to even open ourselves up to the possibility of it being any different way because it would be too painful. We don't want to, like our brain is also wired that way, right? To protect ourselves from trauma. So if something seems like it's going to be a painful realization, we're like, oh no, it can't be. No, it can't be. And it's literally just to protect yourself. That's why your brain is doing that. But yes, it can be. And we just don't want to face it because it would just, it would, it would be too painful. It would be too hard. So we just, oh no, it can't be. It can't be. It's not that bad. Yes. You are lying to yourself. Okay. You are lying to yourself right now. The star. This has something to do with the star or something with an Aquarius. I don't know. We have Aquarius here, Pisces, and the Hermit, Virgo. 
Yeah, you fought against this for way too long here, the Eight of Pentacles. You fought, you fought, you fought this off. Nine of Pentacles, but this has something to do with money, and that's the tower. Boom. This is shocking someone to their fucking core. Is realizing that somebody was in this dynamic here only for the money. Like, that's all they cared about. That's all it was. It was never love. It was never affection. It was only, what can I get out of you? I want stability. I want you to pay for everything. Um, gold digger. Somebody might have realized they have been dating a narcissistic gold digger this entire time, okay? A queen of pentacles. Yeah, and that's the truth. That's the truth. So that's what you could have realized here. The entire time, dating a narcissistic gold digger, okay? Queen of cups. I don't know if you're dealing with a feminine energy. I don't know who I'm talking to here today. Ten of cups. Yeah, and you... Whoever you are, I feel like you were in it for emotions. You were in it for love. And this other person was only in it for the money. And that's a hard pill to swallow. I get it, right? I really get it. But, you know. Let's see. Who's in this for Capricorn? An investigator, a baby daddy, and a religious leader. A Sagittarius and a gang member. December. So this could have something to do with a Sagittarius born in December. Someone's cousin. A karmic and a Pisces. July. June and the IRS, okay. And a friend. And an Aquarius. All right, I'm going to leave it at that, okay? I hope this helps, Capricorn. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.